Hello, hello, it's Thumplet here. Here's an item on geometry. Take a look at the figure. We do have triangle PMO and some of the things that uh, we're given with. Find the product of the side lengths of triangle PMO. Credits to the Philippine Mathematical Olympiad for this item. As usual, pause this video if you'd like to give this item a try. But if you're done, let us dive into the solution. A bit of a disclaimer here, I do believe that my solution is not the prettiest because in my uh, calculations, there's a lot of, um, I'm going to say, uh, long expressions, but we should be able to simplify them along the way. Now, if you, if you guys have like a different idea, a different approach to the question, kindly put your um, solutions in the comment section below. We could have a nice discussion down there. All right, um, starting up with my solution over here. It is pretty weird that we're asked about the product of the lengths of triangle PMO. So um, if you do a lot of geometry questions, you would immediately realize that there is a nice formula that kind of involves the product of the lengths. And that's going to be the circumradius formula. So the circumradius R is equal to the product of the side lengths ABC divided by 4 times the area of the triangle. So, well, in this case, if I want to get the product of the side lengths ABC, I would just have to simply get uh, 4 times uh, the circumradius times the radius of the triangle. Okay, and in the given, we do have side lengths, um, some, some lengths to be given. We do have a right angle there, and we do have angle PMO to be 120 degrees. And that really kind of gave me a sign maybe trigonometry is going to be involved because of the angles. There are special angles, so I could induce some trigonometry in the question. So what I decided to do then is to probably rewrite an ABC. Oh, sorry, sorry, the 4RA over here in terms of trigonometric functions. Now, uh, before I started that though, um, I kind of listed down some of the angles because, well, angle PMO, I know that's 120 degrees. The right angle here makes this 30 degrees. And I decided to make uh, this angle here X. And then I just uh, fill up the rest of the angles here with um, angles in terms of X. But that's uh, just a fresh start. And then I decided to think, how do I express the circumradius and the area of the triangle in terms of trigonometry, uh, in terms of trigonometric functions? Now, uh, for the area, that's I think that's pretty straightforward. There's a nice trigonometric form for the area of the triangle. But for the circumradius, well, that's why we have the circumradius formula. But there is another way to actually get the circumradius. And we talked about it, we, we talked about this on the channel before. It is the extended law of sines. So I decided to use the extended law of sines to get um, the circumradius. But um, before that though, I kind of needed some of the side lengths. So let me just go back to uh, writing this. Okay, that's x. Okay, this is 60 minus x, and they do have the 30 degrees here. Okay, now for the extended law of sines, I decided to use PO because the only other angle that I have is the 120 degrees in the given. So I know that PO uh, divided by sine 120 degrees that's going to give me twice the circumradius by the extended law of sines formula. So, uh, but before that though, I had to get PO, and then in this case, I just need PB, because I know BO is two. So I decided to get PB uh, in right triangle, MPB. So um, I took the cosine of X in triangle PMB. So cosine of X is gonna be equal to two divided by PB. And then PB here is just gonna be two divided by cosine X. So PB would simply be 2 divided by cosine X. And that's essentially it. I could just use um, PO, which is now 2 over cosine X plus 2 divided by sine of 120. That's going to be square root 3 over 2. That's going to be equal to twice the circumradius. And then uh, just solve for the circumradius, uh, the circumradius R. So that's going to tell me that the circumradius R is going to be equal to, again, not the prettiest thing in the world, but I just wrote it as simply as, as simple as possible. This is going to be the expression for my circumradius. So again, my solution might not be the best, but you guys would kind of see that, I, that like a lot of things is gonna simplify at the end. All right, next, for the area of the triangle, um, I decided to, at, 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 um, at the start, I decided to use the 120 degree angle here and to use one half AB sine theta. But I don't know what MO is, and it's not 
simple to get MO, so I, did, I decided to ditch that idea. I decided to use the angle X here to become my theta. So for the area of the triangle there, it's going to be one half times two times uh, this PO that I just got times uh, two over cosine X plus two and then sine of X. Right, um, the twos cancel nicely and well this part I just kind of multiplied uh, the stuff together and I'm gonna get that the area of the triangle is gonna be 2 tangent x plus 2 sine x. Right, and that's uh, pretty much the simplest way I guess to write the area of the triangle. Now um, that's the circumradius and the area done and I decided to put them back in and I'm going to reach that uh, ABC it's going to be this expression over here. So this expression although it's not the prettiest but it came from the this is just the 4RA. Now I reached my goal of putting everything in terms of trigonometric functions and now I'm trying to, I'm trying to find what's the relationship between some of the trigonometric functions because we do have uh, the ABC in terms of trigonometric functions now, if I could find a relationship between trigonometric functions, I should be able to evaluate that. So uh, I decided to get MB. Now MB here is 2 tangent X. How did I get that? Because I took tangent of X in triangle PMB. I'll get that tangent of X. It's going to be equal to MB over 2. And that's pretty much uh, obvious now. MB must be 2 tangent X. Okay, next. I decided to use this 30 degree angle here, right? Because I haven't used that yet technically. And what I decided to do is to draw a perpendicular or, or the altitude to MO. Now, that's going to give me a nice implication here because this would be 60 degrees because uh, let's just call this point C. MCB is a right triangle now. In fact, it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we know that uh, the side lengths have ratio 1 is to square root of 3 is to 2. That's going to tell me that CB over here must be tangent X. Now, obviously, I could, I could have gotten this just by taking the tangent of the 30 degree angle here in triangle MCB. Oh, not tangent, sorry, sine. Sine of 30. So sine of 30 degrees, that's going to be equal to CB divided by MB, which is 2 tangent X. Now, sine 30 over here, it's going to be 1 half. So, yeah, CB would have to be tangent X. Now, that's going to be the final piece in the puzzle for my relationship between angles because in triangle CBO, that's also going to be a right triangle because of this right angle here, I could get the sine of 60 minus x. So the sine of 60 degrees minus x, that's going to be equal to tangent x divided by 2. And here I have the nice relationship between the trigonometric functions. Because uh, well, obviously I could expand this using the difference identity and hopefully this will be enough to make me uh, get this part. Okay, so um, we do have this expression now and I decided to expand it with the difference identity uh, that I just mentioned. So uh, by the difference identity, this part is going to become square root 3 over 2. So sine 60 times cosine x minus cosine 60 times sine x. And this would be equal to uh, tangent x, I'm going to write it as sine x divided by cosine x. And then times the 1 half here. And then we, I could multiply both sides by 2 to reach this square root of 3 cosine x minus um, sine x. And that's going to be equal to uh, sine x divided by cosine x. And I got this, oh, I mean, yeah, I do have the nice trigonometric relation. But I kind of realized that this part can be written in a better way based from what I have here. So um, take a look here. I could move the sine x to the other side. So I'll have the square root of 3 cosine x is equal to uh, sine x plus sine x divided by cosine x. Take a look. Both have the sine here. So I could divide both sides by sine. So if I divide both sides by sine x, the left side becomes, sorry, the right side becomes 1 over 1 plus cosine x, which is exactly that. And then the left side over here, I'm dividing by sine, so this becomes square root of 3 cotangent of x. So this part, I can write it as square root of 3 cotangent of x. And this, I think this is going to match very well with the tangent over here. And that's what I decided to do, right? So 
this part becomes square root of 3 cotangent x. So next, uh, just simplifying further, square root 3 times square root 3, that's just 3. So this part just essentially cancels out. So this part becomes 2 cotangent of x. Uh, multiplying everything out, it's actually going to give me abc to be 8 tangent x times co 2 cotangent x. Tangent times cotangent is just 1. So this part just becomes 16. And then 8 sine x times 2 cotangent x. Well, cotangent x, that's cosine over sine. So this part just becomes 16 cosine of x. So in fact, if I want to get what abc is, I just have to get what essentially uh, what cosine of x is. And I believe I could get what cosine of x is from uh, this part. This is the nice relationship. Take a look, we do have an expression, sorry, an equation in terms of just sines and cosines. We know that the sine is expressible in terms of cosine, so it's uh, essentially just an equation in terms of cosine x. So that's going to be the agenda here. So uh, we, I try to go back to the formula, uh, sorry, go back to the equation, what is it? Uh, it's this one, highlighted in green. So we do have the square root of 3 cosine x minus uh, sine x, that's going to be equal to sine x divided by cosine x. Okay. And I could multiply both sides by cosine x squared of 3 cosine x squared uh, minus sine x cosine x. And that's going to be equal to sine x. Okay, now um, the sine is expressible in terms of the cosine. We know that sine x is equal to plus or minus one of those two, uh, 1 minus cosine squared of x. So a uh, little bit ambiguous here. We have to determine the sign. Let's just go back to our figure. How did we define the value of x? So, uh, all right, x is this angle in triangle P and B. So it's not the right angle, so it's going to be acute. So that's pretty much enough for us to say that, okay, the cosine and the sine, they both must, must be positive. So that's good. Um, the ambiguity of the sine is gone. We know that sine and cosine, they're both positive. That's good. Okay. So um, just to simplify my work here, I'm just going to let u to be cosine x. So essentially, I'll have the square root of 3 u squared. Uh, I'm going to put the sine x and the cosine x to the other side. So this becomes a uh, square root of 1 minus u squared. That's the sine x over here uh, times cosine x. That's u. And then this sine x is just uh, 1 minus u squared. Uh, this, this, sorry, this, sorry, the square root of um, 1 minus u squared. Okay, I could factor a 1 minus u squared out. So square root of 3 u squared, that's going to be equal to square root of 1 minus u squared times u plus 1. And then I decided to square that to eliminate the square roots. I'll have 3 u to the fourth, that's going to be equal to uh, 1 minus u squared times u, u squared plus 2 u plus 1. All right, not the best expression, but I believe if I, if I could solve for u there, that's going to give me what cosine x is. So let me put this here. So I do have 3u to the fourth. That's going to be equal to 1 minus u squared times u squared plus 2u plus 1. Expanding the right side is going to give me u squared plus 2u plus 1 for uh, this portion, the 1 times u squared plus 2u plus 1. And then uh, the u squared times u squared plus 2u plus 1. That's going to give me minus u to the fourth minus 2u cubed minus u squared. So I do have the u squared cancel out. Pretty nice. And then let's put everything to one side. I'll have 2u to, sorry, 4u to the fourth plus 2u cubed minus 2u minus 1 is equal to 0. And luckily for us, this is actually factorable just via the factoring by grouping. Take a look. I could factor 2u cubed from the first one. And, and then I'm just going to factor out the negative 1 here. And it is going to be factorable as 2u cubed minus 1 times 2u plus 1. Now, two cases here. The first one gives me u cubed equals 1 half, or essentially u is equal to um, 1 divided by the cube root of 2. The second one gives me u to be negative 1 half. u was cosine x, and we did talk about a while ago, x was in an acute triangle. It Sorry, x is an acute angle. It can't be negative, like the sine and the cosine of x can't be negative. So we, we are going to reject the u equals uh, negative 1 half here. We're going to accept u to be 1 over cube root of 2. That's cosine x. That's what we wanted here. Let's put it in. We do have this. 
So lastly, we just evaluate that into the simplest form possible. Let me rationalize this one. 16 plus um, 16 times the 1 over cube root of 2. Rationalizing this by multiplying cube root of 4 in the numerator and the denominator. So 16 plus uh, the denominator here becomes cube root of 8. That's 2. So 16 and the 2 cancel out. Just give me an 8. And then cube root of 4 remains as so. And that's going to be the simplest way for us to write the product of the side lengths, A, B, C. And this will be our final answer. Hopefully you guys learned something new from this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.